has since joined the Indiana Pacers. Um, I'm curious, though, what did you think of his kind of endorsement of Jason Kidd, almost, almost leaking the Kidd hire? Yeah, I hated it. Yeah. I hated it. Um, it's none of his business, in my opinion. And it was a real giant ego move to do that. I think he should have very respectfully not talked about that. I thought he was way out of line. Um, that's just – that doesn't need to happen. I don't think the organization wanted it. Um, that no one's no again, no one's told me that. But I, I don't think that I don't think this organization wanted that. And I just think that it was just him on an ego trip, and it was real unnecessary, in my opinion. Do you think it was like an intentional leak, like because it was it was what? Four, I don't think there's any way hours later that it was reported, or twelve hours later. Jason Kidd was the coach, and Rick knew that. I would I don't think there's any way he didn't know that. And, and, I'll, and I'll say this, you know, I, even if he really wholeheartedly felt that way, he didn't, you know, he, he knew Jamal was up for that job. Right. And, and you know what? That, that's what I wanted to lead into is what is the Jamal Mosley fallout here? Because we've we, we seen, you know, uh, I believe, uh, yeah, it was uh, Brad, Brad Townsend reported that, you know, he was, he was upset about it or, or sources he was mm -hmm. upset about it. I would um, be upset about it if I was Jamal. Because you, you're, you're a part of his staff, right? You, you guys yeah, are. and, you know, the other thing, too, is I know, so I'll just tell a quick anecdote. You know, all these guys in the NBA know each other. They'll have different levels of relationships. But one time I got to stand in the hallway with Jason Kidd and Jamal Mosley and talk basketball. Like, I wasn't talking yet. I was listening to these guys. And they were getting in depth about defensive philosophies, and it was awesome. And, um, and I was told by a couple of people that Jason very much wanted to keep Jamal on the staff. Uh, I don't know Jamal's contractual status. I have no idea. Uh, I do know, wasn't it Stein that reported that he was going to interview for the Washington and Orlando job? Yes, uh, um, I believe he was just uh, added to the Olympic coaching roster today as well. Okay, good. Um, that's great. I, I'm a huge Jamal Mosley fan, which makes me just like everyone else that's ever met him. Everyone is a huge Jamal Mosley fan because he's a great dude. Like, and, you know, he comes from this, uh, you know, this – uh, coaching, I guess this uh, resurgence in coaching to where guys come up through being player development guys. Like I think a real good example of that is, um, you know, the coach with the Heat and Coach Spol. Yeah, thank you, Spolstra. And uh, I know that that Tim Gergerich, who had a really good influence here on the Mavericks on the 2011 team came from Denver. I know Jamal came from Denver. And I remember one time asking Tim Gergrich about player development stuff, and he spoke very highly of Jamal Mosley. So uh, he is regarded as an incredible player development coach. Here he was sort of our uh, defensive coordinator. Um, I hope he stays. I mean, actually, I hope he gets a head coaching job somewhere because I think he wants that, and I want that for him. But if he doesn't get that and the opportunity is here to stay, he would be a huge asset to this organization, in my opinion. Absolutely. Uh, as well, do, can I allow you to speculate a little bit? Why do you think he was maybe overlooked by the Mavs for the job? And, and as well, to unpack that even more, it's very clear him and Luca are, are very, very close. Um, do you think maybe that was either a detriment to him, maybe? I don't or know. I, I, so what I suspect uh, in looking at Kid's history and looking at Jamal's history and looking at the people that were involved in making that decision, Dirk, Michael Finley, um, you know, Cuban had said that the hirings were concurrent. In other words, they were done in tandem. So that makes me, you know, assume that Nico Harrison, and it's been widely reported that him and Kid have a relationship. But, you know, if you're Dirk and you're Finley and you're Cuban, you know the basketball acumen of kid in high pressure situations because he won a championship with you and you know how smart he was and he also does have the experience running other teams jamal does not like if you were to sit here and tell me you know exactly what jamal mosley's head coaching style is going to be you can't tell me that just as i can't tell you that and the mavericks couldn't tell you that because he's never done it and so what i suspect is that I suspect they value him quite a bit, 
but because of the point where Luca is in his career, I think they wanted to go with someone that had done it before. So I really think it's more about what they value in Jason Kidd as opposed to what they don't think or don't value with Jamal. I, I think it's more about Kidd than it is Jamal, personally. Perhaps Mosley's kind of better suited in a rebuilding kind of situation. Is, is. He may be perfectly suited for this. Yeah. We don't know yeah. because he's never done that. So I think it really probably has more to do with that. Um, and again, you can't have experience until you have experience. I suspect he's going to be a great coach, but I don't know that. It's, you know, you're, you're, you're betting on the come, so to speak. And I just think that those group of guys, Cuban and Finley and, and Dirk, and, and, you know, I can't really speak on Nico in, in that regard, but I think they're very comfortable with kids' basketball savvy and how that might, you know, merge with Luca's burgeoning abilities to be a coach on the floor and minimize needing a big-time X's and O's guy. Like, LeBron doesn't need a big-time X's and O's guy. Chris Paul doesn't need a big-time – X's and O's guy. Luca will be one of those people that doesn't need a big time X's and O's guy. They're great. They're great to have, but I don't know that that's one of the things that a, a, a coach that coaches Luca needs more than other stuff because I think that his innate ability to understand the game and see things develop, you know, makes up for the perceived lack of that by whoever is or isn't coaching him. Right on.